Hi, everybody. Welcome Hi. to A Wee Bit of Alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, tonight, we want to talk a, a, a bit about Sung and get into some, uh, some depth on that, mm -hmm. and also on the water element, since we are now moving into the winter season. So uh, the getting into the uh, the water element and, and do some uh, some water meditation that uh, help things along. So uh, first the uh, just the idea of sung. So it's something that is you know we we talk about it a lot and um, particularly in regard to say sung kwa and and how we want to relax into the intrinsic structure of the body, but um, one thing that uh, it's one of those topics I think just keeps keeps on giving. It's uh, you know Yang Cheng Fu had it like at the top of his list. It's like every every class that was that was the the one thing that he wanted to focus on was Sung. And so the the idea here is it's a lot of times it's translated as relaxation. You want to relax and just totally let go and it doesn't quite get to the essence of Sung, which is that you're not, you're not just spilling out and, and letting go. You are relaxing into something, into a structure. So as you get more yin, you feel the stability and support that the yin element allows you to experience. So the way I have been explaining it and uh, that is useful to me is to think of it in terms of, of an alternative to muscular contraction where you are releasing extraneous muscular tension and allowing you to feel the support of the intrinsic uh, structure of your body, particularly your connective tissue system. When you do that, when you are aligned, you have your, uh, your feeling into that support, then it allows the energy to flow much more freely throughout the whole body. And you also are able to access the tensegrity of the structure, which means that you can feel into that tensile strength, which doesn't require a lot of, of, of tightness, tension, muscular contraction in order to make that happen. So it's a, uh, since all of us grew up with the idea of, of the muscular contraction as a way to, to uh, generate strength. And it's a, it's a, it's a shift to, to go the other direction, particularly, and this is something that came up in, recently in one of these talks was, you know, the idea of releasing into your legs but it's not that your uh, your legs are just letting go. They are they're they're still doing a lot of work. It's just a different kind of work. So um, I thought of an exercise that uh, is helpful to get an idea about this to actually get a get a feeling for it. And um, uh, so you can see that there's a there's an active and a passive kind of muscular activity. So the muscles are always involved. As long as you're standing up, living, breathing, your muscles are in there somewhere. It's shifting away from muscular contraction as a way of generating power is the, is the direction that we're doing with Tai Chi. So if you stand up and uh, if you can find a wall or something, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. At the, uh, I'm going against the wall and kind of leaning into that. And as I release and sink down toward the wall, there is, I'm releasing into the support of my arms. And now I'm gonna push away from the wall. And that's a different kind of muscular activity. So as I release down, I'm gradually letting go of muscular contraction to be able to feel the support. And then as I 
push away, I am using my muscles to contract, which creates a different, a different feeling. If we translate that into the legs, you just stand and feel your weight over the ball of your feet and then just release down and just sink into the sink into the structure. Now push away from the earth and stand up taller and just feel the muscular contraction. So that's what's happening for most of us all day is that pushing away thing. And it gets at its, its worst whenever we lock our knees and just kind of lock our joints and just kind of create this rigid structure. What we want to do is uh, sink down and release into the, the uh, passive uh, support of the muscles. You're, if you stand like this for any length of time, you will feel, you'll feel those muscles. You'll feel the, you feel the work that they're doing, but it's a different kind of work than if you're say pushing away. If, you know, if I, let's say if you, you know, if I'm going to go down and do a squat, you know, I'll go down like this, and I'm pushing up. You can feel the muscular tension that's required to, to, push away from the gravitational pull of the earth. Whereas if I'm ah, sinking down, 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 I'm releasing muscular tension as I'm going down, kind of letting the air out of the uh, balloon as I slowly go down. And then as I come back up, I'm contracting the muscles and pushing away. So what we're trying to do with Sung is recognize that pre-conscious impulse to push away, which is really at, at the core of most of our, our activities we're doing most of the time is pushing away from the earth. So any, to any chance you get, you soften the knees and you align your body so that the structure takes uh, a lot of the force just the way it, it lines up. Now, just for fun, rock back into your heels and still keep your knees unlocked and just notice the muscular tension that it takes to support yourself whenever you are that far back in your heels. And just, just be aware of that because a lot of us are doing this all day. And Go back into the balls of your feet and just release down and just allow yourself to, to sink. So think of your, your body like a, uh, an hourglass and the sand is going through the hourglass and exiting through your feet. And the other half of the hourglass is down there below, below the earth, below the floor and you're filling up that other part of the hourglass. You're allowing any tension to just kind of sink down. But notice that you, your legs are still working. It's just a different kind of working. It's a passive support rather than, a, than a, an active one. And when you do this, this allows for the energy to circulate much more freely. So now put your right foot forward and feel the ball of your right foot, center your right knee and pick up your, your left heel so that all your weight is in that front leg. Allow your body to get vertical. And just sink into that. So we're, we're getting soon. We're sinking into that leg and the support of it. So now we're going to take that idea of sung and make, bring it into the sung qua. Because a lot of times that leg tension that we 
And by pushing away the earth just locks up the claw and we don't get a chance to really feel what it's like to be sung in the claw. So keeping the leg set, just release and spiral down to the right and sink into the claw and just feel that, feel the release down into that. And just hang there. And notice that there's, there's some work being done when you do that. But we're letting go of the muscular tension that, that says push away from the earth and we're going into agreement with this pull of gravity. We're actually using it as an ally. And then turn, turn, don't bob up, just turn back to center. And then spiral down to the right again and just feel that, just releasing down and the central pillar, your central equilibrium, keep that set. Reach with the crown of your head and turn back to center. Now feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and spiral down to the left. Feel that releasing down. And notice that your leg is, is definitely talking back to you now. It's saying, oh, hey, what's up here? But you want to feel into that because we're, every time we do this, we start to familiarize ourselves with that passive yin um, support, which it turns out is even stronger, even more powerful than the, uh, than the active one. But it's a different kind of power. It's a soft power. And turn back to center. And spiral down to the left, release, sink, feel into that. Good, and then back to center. Good, and then bring your feet parallel. And just feel into that and just allow yourself to release down. So you're disconnecting that tension in the hip joints and in the groin, the inguinal area, and you're sitting down into your body. And a lot of reasons why we have trouble discovering this and, and being aware of this is that it is so different from our normal practice and the muscles there are actually, um, they've atrophied to some degree. Some, some never actually have been developed much in the first place. So what we're doing is we're opening up this whole new realm to explore. And I know a lot of you have done a lot of standing meditation, things like that, and that's, that's fine. And just uh, to bring this idea into it, Because it's a, a, an endless font of discovery. No matter how much I think I know about this topic, it, it, the, the time I'm doing it now is the best time ever, just because it's now. And you peel off the layers of unconsciousness, you know, by bringing your conscious awareness to this and, and just also learning to tolerate the discomfort because it's a, it's a, uh, as long as it doesn't get to pain, but if you're feeling the discomfort, it's like, it's, it's reminding you that work is being done, that you are transforming your body mind as you do this. because this applies to everything. So let's take a moment here and, and uh, see if there's anybody has any questions or thoughts on this that uh, uh, we can clear up before we go any further. Valerie. Butt muscles. Talk about the butt muscles involved while you're um, 
allowing the legs to be the support and relaxing or uh, letting the um, quad be yin. Uh, I find that if my butt muscles contract, I lose that uh, softness in the quad. Am I just thinking something in my brain and I'm trying to simplify it or am I making it more complicated? But I just find that if I clench the butt muscles at all, I lose it. I totally agree. <laughs> okay. All right. It, it, your, your, your butt should be like a baby's. It should be really soft and squishy. <laughs> Squishy, so no problem. It, uh, you're, 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 it's, it, you're not using those at all whenever you're doing this. Richard. I was just thinking as Valerie was talking that um, uh, I, I have to constantly relax my glutes. So okay. Almost any time I think about it, my glutes are tight. And I suspect that most of us who've had lower back problems have this as an issue. Right. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. I think it's, you know, the, the, I think whole, the, the, the whole glute mate. The corollary is true also that those of us who have this problem have lower back problems. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I think they I think it works both ways. Yes, I think there's a connection. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Peter. You're on mute. You're on mute, Peter. I'm a little hazy on what exactly the qua is. People talk about it uh, as the inguinal fold, but uh, I imagine that's the location. And yes. I, don't I don't really know if the qua is defined anatomically or posturally or energetically, or you know what exactly is the qua that we're sinking into or sitting into? All the above, and uh, but you're absolutely right. We we we're, we're locating it at the uh, focal says at the inguinal crease, but it's it, technically it's the hip joint. Okay. And, okay. and so, but it thinking of it in the it, it functionally, you want to think of it as that point where the uh, the leg, the thigh muscles meet the torso, and that's at the uh, at the groin there. The the inguinal uh, line there so that so that is that line is uh, defines the intersection point of leg and and torso and what has happened is due to that muscular tension that that connection has kind of has gotten into a uh, a solidity that doesn't uh, allow for a, a functionality at, 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 his, at his optimum. So we want to, so the qua is the, it, some of the strongest muscles in the body are, are in the qua, uh, that, that's in your glutes, it's connected up to that. You know, the, uh, uh, your leg muscles, you know, if you want to, if you, at a purely muscular level, you know, if I want to jump up and touch the ceiling, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to fold here, right? I'm going, and then I'll, I'll leap up and, and do that. If I'm going to pick up a heavy barbell, what am I going to do? I'm going to go down like this ah, and pick that up. So we're using this. This is, we, we know that this is a, a, a very powerful connection to the body, but that's that young aspect of it that I was talking before, where you're pushing away from the earth. The yin side is to where you release into that, then it opens up probably the most important energy gate in the body, at least in terms of volume. You get more juju out of a out of sung kwa than you will out of pretty much anything else. So it's uh, uh, it allows the yang chi to exit through your feet, allows the yin chi to come up and shoot up through your head. So it's, there's a, it's, it's big in terms of allowing the flow. Because there's one thing, if you get into the central equilibrium, you're opening those energy gates. But if there is a, 
a dam there at the Qua, then it's going to cause problems, back problems, it's going to cause urogenital problems, it's going to cause, uh, uh, yeah, actually, it's going to throw everything off. So, uh, and a lot of it's going to, it's going to cause psychological problems because a lot of times people, and I found this a lot in my, in my practice where the, you know, people will be in a state of hyper vigilance, anxiety, whatever. It's because so much of the yang chi that they're being bombarded with every day has no place to go. And when they find out that they can release that down through, the, through their feet, it's like, oh, there's space there in the, in, in the mind. Whereas before it's the yang chi just makes it just it's rattling around. It's just circulating around and around, and it uh, and they perseverate. They they go into these these loops, these oh. mental thought loops, where these oh. things are churning around. So being able to do that has a, a pro profound effect on your psychological state if you can release at the qua. Also, in the uh, in the whenever we tighten the qua, there's a tendency to tighten up the the piriformis muscles, which are very responsive to stress. And that will cause a tension there, which reflects in the iliopsoas and in the diaphragm. And it causes a lot of mischief there. It, uh, and it kicks you into, a, into that hypervigilant state also. And it kind of feeds on itself, which then it rubs against the, the sciatic nerve and it creates irritation, which goes down your legs. And oh my God, it's a mess. Yeah. And sciatica, <laughs> and you wind up with sci sciatica sometimes. Does that happen? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's yeah. a, it's actually not a pure sciatica. It's more what you would call piriformis um, syndrome, which right. is that is the piriformis and the sci sciatic nerve come out of the sciatic notch in the sacrum together, and whenever the piriformis, because of the way we're standing, way we're holding ourselves, if it gets short and thick it leaves less room for the sciatic nerve and it kind of chafes against it. And then you end up with, uh, with pains running down your leg. And uh, I know I get it if I'm, uh, if I'm driving a long trip, if I'm doing like, driving like seven hours or something like that in a, in a car, then you know, I will get this, this problem because you, you turn your foot out for the, the right foot off the accelerator. And so you're causing that piriformis to be engaged for at a pre-conscious level for hours and hours and hours. And eventually, you know, your, your sciatic nerve starts screaming. So uh, you get out, you turn your feet the other way, turn them a, a pigeon toed and just allow the sacrum to open up a little bit. And that helps with that. Cool, Scott, you had something, didn't you? Um, two things are kind of obvious, but I want to mention them. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, first is, um, you can obviously that can obviously be a meditation where you just kind of stand there and just see what you can release, right? Yes, definitely. And, uh, um, the other thing is, um, you know, we don't. I, the exercise obviously was to feel us pushing away, but we can push away without. We can we can push away without tensing the muscles, right? I mean, we should be able to do any action without. Yes, muscles, right? you're right. You're right, and that, and that, that's then it's more of a uh, a reaching rather than a pu uh, than a pushing. And so, you know, we've talked about that before. But you know, if you if you extend your arm, reach out, you know, Master Chen's here's your coffee, here's your tea for his punch, right? And that that is it's different than pushing away. And so that it's the same idea with the legs. You can. You can, you can do that. One of the things that, you know, if you want to do weightlifting, say you want to do resistance exercises in a, in a Tai Chi way, so you don't worry so much about the, the pushing away, you very slowly allow the weight to sink in. And so you're becoming, you're cultivating those yin uh, muscles and, and that yin support network. Same thing with, with a, like a squat, you know, it's rather than pushing away, it's uh, going down. The emphasis is, is on going down and, 
and really feeling into that. And that will allow for more of this yin supportive network and also allow you to then, you know, if, if I want to, you know, if I want to go into a squat and I'm going down like this, I don't have to uh, push away like that. I can just reach up and it's a different feeling than this, you know, with the, with the emphasis on the muscular contraction. So we're trying to bring Sung into every aspect of what we're, what we're, we're doing here and realize we're not giving up anything by giving up a lot. You know, we, we, we have to surrender to get into Sung. We have to surrender the muscular contraction, but in terms of performance, we actually are improving performance by, uh, by doing it this way. Uh, anybody else? Lynn. Um, so you brought up, you said that, and then Nick said, you know, slow and soft. Soft. Can you do some fast? Yes. Can one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely. So it doesn't have to be slow. No, just, okay. It just uh, you, we do everything slow, just to get to understand it. Yeah. Right. We do it so we can we can get it away from those those you know, mental machines that run things. And we, we, we get off autopilot and we, you know, take over manual control. And so we, you know, we're saying, oh, okay, I'm running the show now. And then you, then you can, you can, you can learn to do it very quick. In fact, you, if you want to do Tai Chi as a martial art, you need to, you need to be able to be soon and just, you know, Master Chen, you know, whenever he would throw punches, yeah. he was very strong, but you know, he, he would throw like 15 punches in a second. And it's like, you know, it's like it, was, it, was a, it was a blur. And uh, it's like, whoa, you know, but he was, he was very soft and uh, as he was doing it. And in doing so, he was able to get more speed, which then created, created more effectiveness in, in each punch. Thanks. You bet. Andrew. Two, two, two comments, thoughts. Um, one was I remember in a little private moment, like a, a lesson with Master Young, he said the difference between, a, um, I don't know if this is exactly relevant, but the difference between an internal art and an external art is that in an internal art, the chi holds the muscles. And in an external art, the muscles hold the chi. That, that's, that's good. That's a, that's a yeah. nice summary. So you know, in the uh, yeah, in the internal arts, what we we do is we mobilize the chi first, and then we move. Yeah, and he's not saying that the external arts don't have chi. He's just right. saying that, that that it's held by the muscles. That that's a, I think that's a, that's an appropriate thing to say. I think it's a that that uh, is uh, right on the money there. And the other point I was going to make is. Um, you know, before the pandemic, a lot of, maybe some of you knew I was doing like some of this resistance training with the very old, old people kind of, it was an old person's, it was called the old person's program. And uh, my trainer, he's, I, I was showing him some Tai Chi things about like doing it virtually, not with the weights, but just doing it the way we're doing here. And he said that study, because you're at, in, in this, in this training for older people, you're not really trying to build muscle, like build up your muscles you're trying to there's a certain kind of muscle i forget what kind it is that you're trying to to strengthen for old age and he said studies show that this, you build those muscles doing like tai chi type movements without even actually being physical about it like the, the studies show that that the the yin virtual doing of it it might not do it quite as much as if you have a little bit of weight on but it it does it it's kind of cool Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I think it goes, it fits in with the idea that if you're circulating the chi more, you're getting more nutrition to the area, and you're also removing waste products from the area, which then stimulates more growth and uh, more fluidity. And, and so you're going to get, you're going to get a lot of advantage from that, more so if you do it correctly, more so than even if you do have resistance. But I think I think both are good. 
it's just it's a uh, bringing consciousness to any activity allows you to recruit uh, more muscle fibers. I remember whenever I, you know, when I, was, I was training for tournaments, you know, sometimes I would do, I would do like, you know, with, with the resistance, I'd, I just feel that, you know, just do it very slowly. I just I'll feel into the muscles and allow them to, to let go, but also be supported by the, by the chi. So then it would, uh, it would enhance growth and, and more a higher level of functionality than if I were just doing a lot of reps. Mm. So it's a different it's a different way of thinking about it. But I think it uh, is particularly for us old folks. It's it's a it's a real swell thing to do. Cool. Um, let's uh, let's move on to water since we're we're into the second half of the program here. Let's uh, so we are in winter officially. Huzzah! We have, uh, the days are getting longer. So we have, we have, the progress has gone from very young in the summer to more and more yin. We went through metal in the, uh, in the fall and metal is going from, from yang to yin. And now we are at the most yin part of the year. And this is the area that is we are, um, it's governed by kidney and urinary bladder in terms of, of acupuncture. And it's, this is the time of year when we are nurturing the, the kidney area, which is the, your kidney jing, your kidney essence is uh, in Chinese medicine is, is the source of your vitality, your longevity. And uh, so you, the more you, you can allow that to, to be nurtured at this time, sets up a foundation, which then feeds the other organs. So the cycle that, that the, through the seasons is we go from kidney to, uh, to liver, which is springtime, to um, heart, which is summer, which go to the uh, um, pancreas, no, uh, spleen. We go to the spleen, late, late summer, to the lungs, which are fall, and then and metal, and, and then we go back to kidney again. So it follows this, this pattern. And if you work with the seasons if you you honor the the energy of the season you'll find that it is the appropriate energy for the for the next season is is ready to go so whenever springtime comes around it's like oh boy oh boy the the energy is just it's 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 bursting forth so the uh, the water element the, some of the characteristics, it's uh, intelligence and wisdom, softness, uh, fluidity, um, and um, quiet. So it's everything kind of settling down. And so just being able to, in your meditation, to be able to go there. So uh, I'd like to bring in the Sung idea with a little water meditation, just so you can get a taste of, of that water energy because all these different elements, they have different feelings to them. They're very, very um, uh, distinct in their, their qualities. And to be able to get familiar with water chi, it uh, allows you to then have a better grasp of, of the other elements as well, particularly since it is your your yin reference point. Okay, so let's, uh, would you stand up? Okay, so step out. 
feel the weight over the balls of the feet, feel through the whole foot, but particularly focus on the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown of your head, your knee one. Retract the chin and allow the jade pillow gate to open. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Feel your butt and you should feel soft and squishy. Reach out a little bit with your elbows, your arms are slightly rounded. Point with your index fingers. And allow yourself to sink. Get very soon. Water controls the blood and all the fluids, the lymphatic fluid, the um, cerebral spinal fluid, synovial fluid, all that stuff that's moving through your body. It also is um, controls the bones and the bone marrow. As you allow yourself to get even more sung, spiral down to the left, turn to the right, just release the hip joints a little. So we're getting sung qua, feeling ourselves sinking. There's a load in the legs, but that's okay. That's what they're that's what we're designed for. And bow forward slightly. Feel yourself sinking even more, releasing at the quad. And then as you straighten up, your hands come up. Your chest height. And reach out, reach out with your elbows, with your wrists, feel that rounded. And press down, sink, dissolve. Feel the motion and the stillness. Feel the blood flowing through your arms, your hands, your legs, your feet, circulating throughout the whole body. Feel your bones. Bow. Hands come up. Very soon, your arms are soon. Shoulders, your body has a shape, but it's not, there's no tension holding it together. Reach up with the fingers. Rotate the palms. Press down. Feel the motion inside your skin. Feel all the activity that's happening there. Feel the pulse. Come 
up. Your body is sinking. Hands reach up and reach forward a little bit. Reach with your elbows, reach with your knee one, sink into your legs, sink into your dantian. Press down. And your body is seventy percent water. We are we are ambulant bags of water. The more coherence we can bring to that water, the better everything functions. Palms up, carry. Hands reach up. Reach out. Continue to reach, bending forward, lengthening your spine, reaching with the crown of your head, opening the joints, opening your back, and sink, hands come down. Feel your feet. Feel your ankles, bring your hands on your legs coming up, feel your knees, your thighs, your hips, feel your spine, feel your shoulder blades, your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, open. Down. Feel your feet, your ankles, your knees, thighs, hips. Feel your spine, shoulder blades, shoulders, elbows. Wrists, fingers, reach. And down. It's time to feel the feet, the ankles, the knees, hips, spine, shoulder blade, shoulders, elbows. Wrist, fingers, and again, just feel that down and just one continuous motion, but feel, feel the sequence as you're moving through. And hands come down. It'll get very soon. Feel the water. Feel the quiet. Feel the bubbling well points in your feet. You're using the balls of your feet for support, but that opens the gate there in the, ball, the balls of your feet. It allows a place for all that yang chi that 
we're bombarded with every day to go. Allows the yin chi to bubble up. The bubbling well point is a, the first point on the kidney meridian. As you breathe, breathe deeply into your, into your Dantian, but continue to breathe until you feel your back expanding. Breathe. Allow your breath to go all the way down to the perineum, to the hui yin. And feel your back expanding, opening. Step in. Deep breath. And disappear the chi. Take a minute to dissolve into the emptiness. Take a seat. Scott. I got two things. First of all, living in California, I don't understand why I never thought of this before, but it just occurred to me why surfers are so mellow. <laughs> we got an abundance of water, Chi. Yeah. And um, every time you had us, every time we kind of just stopped and felt the energy, it felt like I was standing in a glass and somebody, like, like it was like a whirlpool. The energy was just <laughs> around, just, it was the weirdest thing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Rick. Yeah, again, you know, you announce a rave, we have an incredible rave inside the body, and then you said everybody's got to go. And it's like the rave is going, no, no, this is, we're being doused. It's like being in a dance club where they're dousing us with refreshing liquid every couple of seconds. <laughs> and then, okay, we're done now, you got to go. And <laughs> when, just when I started this, the, I came in late, of course, with uh, the first movement, but as soon as I did the first movement, I could have stood that way for hours without feeling any <laughs> exhaustion. But then the second movement, it was as if you opened a sluice, not even a tap, a sluice on my shoulders. And this incredibly tingly, cool, refreshing energy just poured into me. Wow. It wow. was, uh... <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> that's great. Bravo to you. Bravo Thank you for you. sharing that, that that's delightful. Thank That's you for giving that, allowing me to experience that. Jeez. Yeah, it was delightful. It really was. That's great. So when we develop a, a familiarity with these elements, we're then able to tap into them. You know, and, you know, as a martial art, it's, it's very helpful because they, they, each of them presents their own particular form, strategy, et cetera, which allows you to, uh, 
to express energy in a different way. And we want to keep them circulating so that nobody gets left out. None of the children get, uh, none of the children go hungry. So we want to keep, uh, keep, uh, keep it going. So uh, it's real easy. I know for me, just, you know, coming from a go, go, go perspective, you know, when it came down to winter time, I was very impatient with, with the, the, the slow pace of winter, you know, for, through mo most of my life and, you know, would try to fill it up with lots of do, 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 do stuff so that I could, could somehow imagine myself to have that, the young chi of summer all the way through. And uh, then, you know, I, I kind of wear out. And by the time February would hit, I'm been like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm exhausted. And it's because I never gave myself a chance to replenish the yin chi. And just by being alive in 2020, most of us are yin deficient. And, and you know, the, we're constantly bombarded by all this stimulation, which gets, gets the energy just really buzzing and crackly, and, which is fun, and I love it. But if you don't have that nice yin support there, underneath it, you get, you get, you get wired up. So it's nice to be able to do, nice to be able to do both. And this is the time of year to take a moment each day and really tap into that water chi, tap into your, that quiet, fluid, soft, round, hmm, flowy part of yourself. Cool, anybody else? Sandy. Yeah, I just want to say I, I feel really good now. I mean, I feel kind of calm. And um, when, I, when I was doing the movements, I felt my lower body felt very like kind of heavy, but very grounded. And I just feel really good now. I think this is my favorite one that we've done <laughs> so far. I, I, the feeling is really nice right now. I feel really nice. Good. Thank People you. should sleep well tonight. <laughs> good. Did you have something, Stan? Yes, Rick, uh, very much. This was very enjoyable. Uh, it's still, for me, it's work on because those muscles are still not all that used to it. But some of the things that are going on, they're fantastic. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Mm. Wonderful. Great. OK. Uh, we're going to sign off now. Uh, love you all. Uh, remember, there's a Tai Chi class tomorrow. and. Uh, uh, great. Thanks, Happy Rick. holidays, everybody. Thank you. Happy holidays to you yeah, and everybody here. Happy, Happy holidays. Bye, Bye, -bye. Holidays, everybody. Happy ho ho holidays. <laughs> right. Everybody, I'm thank you. I'm still swirling. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on by the foot. Keep on swirling.